here with Thomas and uh, Brandon of the Future Birds. The morning after an incredible set, uh, I guess y'all kicked off, um, you know, yesterday in the that tent. Right, right. Um, great show. I mean, it was huge turnout, packed. Yeah. How does that show compare to others in y'all's? Is that the crumb de la crumb? I mean, I think so. I think, for the, especially for the size and it just being us, like, we played shows that yeah. have been that big, but as an opening act, to have, like, people coming to see just us, it's yeah. been, it was, it was And the awesome. reaction, I mean, it couldn't, I don't think it could have gone much better. Yeah. yeah. I felt, we felt really good about it. I've been here to Thursday night shows before, and I haven't mm -hmm. turned out like that yeah. this early on a Thursday. So you felt like people knew the tunes, people knew the future birds? I, I think some of them some did. Of them. I think a lot of people... A lot of people knew about it. A lot of people had like heard buzz and were like, "Oh, I want to go check this out." And then yeah. I think a lot of people were just like excited that it was, you know, one of the first Bonnery shows, you know, that's like I was on one of the bigger stages, you know. And uh, seeking shelter in the shade. Yeah, exactly. Get under that shade, and I think everybody's just like, you know, we were talking about it for like the hour and a half before the show. There's just energy amongst everybody. Like all these people was like, oh, "I want to see the music," you know. And then when they finally did, they were just like so satisfied by it. You know, it's really cool. Were y'all at all nervous about the gig? I mean, I was playing Bonnery is like one of the top things you can kind of do. Oh, uh, yeah, totally. For a rock band. And we, we, I mean, we were talking about it. I mean, not not so much nervous leading up to it. I mean, you get that antsy feeling before you play, but it's kind of like a good antsy feeling. You know, it's just your adrenaline. You're just ready, just to, you're just ready to go. Yeah, you just exactly. want to just play the show. You don't want to sit around backstage. You know, you load your gear and then you just sit there for like an hour and a half. Everything's ready to go. Uh, can't really get into the zone until after the show's over or during the show, so... You know, just kind of like this in between period. Yeah. Like, well, y'all's music is uh, sometimes described as psychedelic country. Like when I hear that term, I think uh, Toby Keith on liquid acid. <laughs> and yet, y'all's music sounds nothing like that. <laughs> um, I, think, I think people get the psychedelic from the reverb and the delay. Yeah. And, uh, I'm guessing. I don't know. It's my take. What do you? Yeah, I mean, I think there's certain, certain, definitely certain psychedelic aspects to the music there. I mean. But, uh, as far as like 60 psychedelic music, I yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just like it depends on what you mean by it, you know. I feel like different people describe different things as psychedelic. Did y'all have a lot of different musical backgrounds individually, or did y'all y'all share a lot of common a common so, ground where that's concerned? A lot of us are open to like everything, so yeah, I feel like we have a lot of stuff in common, but we also have our own things that everybody kind of likes that are. Yeah, others like, may not have never listened to. Yeah, a little bit. Of, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's like a little bit of both. You know, we we all like a lot of the same kind of music, but I think you know we all kind of grew up on different things. And, yeah. you know, but I, like you said, I mean, a lot of times people who you know bands, I'll find out about bands that I didn't really listen to growing up, didn't really know about, and but these guys did, or you know, I'll, and I you know, and you find out about new stuff, and then but like you said too, we're you know we're pretty all pretty open about what we listen to, you know. Never really had a complaint about what's being played. I'm just yeah. picking through some of that. Yeah. Um, well, coming from Athens, which is one of the great uh, music towns in the country, um, it seems like all the bands that come out of there, they're, they're you know their own unique entity. They've all got a different sound. Whereas in like Nashville, you hear a lot of bands and it's just like they sound like this, they sound like that. Um, what do you think accounts for that? I mean, it's. It, I don't know either. I, I've, I've noticed what you I've noticed what you're talking about. Uh -huh. I just wonder if it's just the creativity of young kids getting together and just I don't know, just because it's like college time, people get together and just have first time away from home and just I don't know. I, I think I think it's in, it's, it's encouraged. I think in in you know in the music industry or in the Athens music scene, you know, to do something that you know pushes the limits a little bit or you know goes do, does something that someone else hasn't really done. Or, Know, just create your own sound because there's a lot of bands in Athens, even though it's a small town, you know. So I guess you have to distinguish yourself. But it is interesting though that there's not really an Athens sound. It's not like you can be like, oh, well, that's that sounds like an Athens band. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. There's just good listeners in Athens too. So I feel like any band can do well if it's. Your fans, I know, a lot of bands can do like well because people will actually like just pay attention and listen, and not just party and dance to. You know, that's you know they want. You know, or, but I mean, not exclusively even, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. So. It's all over the place. Yeah. It is. 